All right, so let's start working on this one next. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to create a construction line that defines the locations of this slot, this circle, and this circle. And then what we're going to do is we will build the structure around it. So let me go ahead and do that. So we note that this is 30 degrees, but I'm actually going to draw this line and this line and put an angle of 120 degrees between them. All right, so let me just drop this over here. Let's make it a little smaller so that we can see some stuff. And let me make my SOLIDWORKS window over here. Okay, we can get rid of this one that we just did. All right, so I'm gonna create a new part. In this case, the dimensions are in inches. Pretty much you can tell it from the size. We probably don't have a a part that's 7.13 millimeters in length. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my sketch tab, create a new sketch. I'll choose the front plane and I'm going to utilize my center line. I'll come over here choosing this point as my uh, at my origin and I'll double click here to end it. So the point of my origin of my sketch is over here at the center of this circle. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to make my two dimensions. So this is going to be 7.13. This one I'm going to go up just to the circle. So I'm going to put in my 5.63. Make sure I'm aligned. So 5.63 and I'll put in my angle so again I'm selecting this line. The smart dimension tool thinks I want to make the dimension of that line, which I've already done, and then when I select the other line, it knows that I want to make it an angle. So I'll make this uh, 120 degrees, so 90 plus 30 is my 120. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I have a circle here and a circle here on the slot, so let me go ahead and put my two circles in, that one and this one, and I'm going to go to my straight slot tool, and I'll select that point and I'll just come over somewhere along this line, again not catching the center point, select and then the third drop is for the thickness or the, the, the diameter of the slot. And I'll hit escape to get out of the tool. Now if we bring this over, we'll see that the dimension for the circles are 1.25. But if we look over at the slot, we're told that the width of the slot is 1.25 which means, of course, that these circles have to have a diameter of 1.25. So we can make all those equal to each other. So I'll select that circle, hold down my control key, select the other circle, and then the curve of the slot, let go of my control key, and I'll choose to make them all equal to each other. And the dimension is 1.25, so let's put that in there. And then the last thing we need to do is put in the 3.25 dimension to lock down this, the width of this slot. So I'll go to my Smart Dimension tool. I'll just select the edge of the circle and the center point here, and I'll make that um, 3.25. And of course, I'm recognizing that I put this dimension in wrong, so let's double-click that. and just make it 5 and I'll hit return. Again, hopefully you'll notice that my sketch is fully defined right now. Alright, so what I'm going to do, and again let me bring this front and center here, is for you to recognize that the circle here, that this is, you know, you might just think that this is just a radius, I'll put this in as a fillet at some point, but actually it's a very important dimension because it's defining a circle here and then the circle has two lines that are tangent to it. The one that forms the bottom of my part and the one that forms the side on the right hand side here. And then you'll notice that there's a 2.63 dimension coming up here and a 2.63 dimension here. So I'm basically going to be able to draw lines that come off of here and then a perpendicular line off of here that's perpendicular. And this line here 
is going to be parallel to the center line that I just created. All right, let's go ahead and do that. So let me create my circle, or, or I'm going to select my circle tool. The radius is going to be 1.13. So I'll select here, drag out, use my smart dimension tool. And of course, this was one of the mistakes that I had made when I made this uh, the assignment originally because I multiplied in my head 1.13 and came out by came out with an answer of 2.23 so of course I'm not going to do that now I'm going to go two times 1.13 and of course get my value of 2.26 all right so now let me draw my line here that has to be 7.13 I'm going to select my line tool and notice that when I hover over my circle I get these four um, yellow diamonds. Those define the quadrants of the circle. And for this line, I want to be at the quadrant. It's coming basically tangent right up the bottom of the circle. So I'll select there and I'll hold and drag and drop to create my line. And the smart dimension there is 7.13. And while I'm here, I might as well, well I could have done it in once in one bit, but since I'm talking my way through it, I'll just put in this line, make sure it's vertical, and I'll put in my smart dimension here of 2.63. Okay, so let's do the same thing over here. So in this case, I'm going to select the line. And now again, I, have to, I want it to be tangent at some point, but actually let me just move this diameter this distance back a little bit so we can see a little bit better what I'm going to do. So I'm going to select my line tool and I'm just going to click anywhere here. And you might note that if you click it sometimes, hopefully, that you'll get this tangency. So it's, I know it's going to be tangent. And what I'm going to do is I'm purposely just going to click out up here somewhere. And I'm going to, you notice that when you create a line and you keep going, you'll see these yellow lines, one that says, hey, I bet you want to be collinear, and the other one that says, I bet you want to be perpendicular. So I'll just go ahead and say, yep, I want that line to be perpendicular, and I'll double click and I'll end. All right, so obviously there's a problem here with this one I can drag back and forth, and when I click on this one, I can rotate the part every way. So I don't want that, so I'll select this line and select the center line, holding my control key, and I'll put in a parallel relation. I'll put in my smart dimension here. Actually, I don't need to because these two lines have to be equal to each other. So I'll select this one, hold down my control key and select this one and make them equal to each other. And then the last dimension I need to put in is my 6.75 dimension over here, which is listed as dimension B. So let me go ahead and do that. Remember, I want it to be aligned, and this will be 6.75. Okay, so I can put those in the correct order if I want to. Not that it really matters. And now I'm almost done. Well, I have a couple more things to do. But the question is, how do I put these last couple lines in? Well, what I'll do here is I'll click from here, and I'll bring my line so I make sure I get my horizontal. And then what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to drop it here at some arbitrary, arbitrary point and go up to this corner. You say, well, why did I do that? Well, this line doesn't have a specified length because it's coming into this line, which is parallel here. So I just select here and click my center line, let go, and I'll make that parallel again. And as I was expecting, and as you'll see, I'm now completely defined. So I put these two lines in without any dimensions, and they're fully defined. So I can go in here and put my radius in using the fillet tool. So I'll come up here. This is my fillet tool, and there's two different ways I can do this. Let me put in the dimension here. It's going to be 1.75. And I can either select the point itself, the vertex, and that will give me my fillet. So I'll come over here to Entities to Fillet, and I'll right-click, and I'll clear those selections. I can also select this line and this line, and it'll also give me the Entities to Fillet. So I'll just say OK. 
and you'll see that of course it deletes out the original corner and puts in my fillet and notice that it automatically creates my two tangency constraints. Alright, so the last thing I need to do is putting these chamfers in. Again, I'll, I'll note now that we can do this as a feature within a solid part, but let's continue doing this. So I'm gonna I'm done with my sketch fillet, so I'll click the green check mark. And we zoom in here and we'll see that up 1.75 over here on the drawing and I just create a line that's at 45 degrees. So let me do that. I'm just going to click anywhere here and I'll just drop a line that's anywhere. And now I'll use my smart dimension tool to go from this point to this line and make that 1.75 and I'll go from here to here, right, using my smart dimension tool to select those two lines, and I'll make those 45 degrees. Hit escape. I guess I didn't need to because I'm coming up here to do the same thing. I'll select my line tool, just put a line in, double click to end the line, use my smart dimension tool from this point to this line, make sure I stay aligned, and again that's 1.75, and I'll go from here to here and make that 45 degrees. All right, now I'm just going to give you an example here. So the part's done now, but let's take a look at a couple things. Again, if you're trying to make this part look like that part, you might run into an issue where you say, let me trim out these lines. Now, I'll tell you what's going to happen right now. When I put this 2.63 dimension in, it's dimensioning this line, right? I could have also put it in, or I could delete it now and make the dimension between these two lines. And why does that matter? Well, if I go to my trim tool now, and when I trim this line out, this dimension is going to disappear, and my whole part, or my part is going to become underdefined. So let me go ahead and do that. Right? Notice that dimension that was there is now gone. And the same thing, and now this entire line is, is underdefined. So one thing that you might not have noticed was that when this 2.63 dimension went away, it also got rid of that dimension here because, remember, we use an equal constraint. So I'd have to come back now to fix this and put it both those dimensions back. So let me show you... Well, let me prove to you what just happened here. So let me do control Z. So if I delete that dimension 2.63, now notice I am underdefined now because I don't have that equal sign back here. But let me show you something. If I go to my entities now, um, go to my smart dimension tool and select here and here, and I put my 2.63 back in, I'm back, right? So now if I go ahead and trim entities and I select here and here, well, this stays fully defined, but now this doesn't. And I would have to go back in here and put in a smart dimension from this line to this line and make it 2.63. So a lot of extra work to get back to something that we didn't need to do in the first place. So if I hit Control Z, to come back to where I was. Okay, so that's where I was before I did all my trimming out. So I want to extrude this. I think the distance was 0 0.75, so I'll just go to Features, Extrude Boss. Again, it doesn't know what to extrude, so I'll on my contours here, I'll just select here and this circle and I'll make them 0.75, hit OK, and there's my part. Okay, so hopefully this helped and gives you another way of doing it. But just like I said with the other part, your best bet right now is to delete the part, go ahead and build it one more time, make sure you get the, right, the correct dimension. I guess I should check that. Evaluate mass properties and... I think that's what it's supposed to be, 93.69. I guess I should double check, but I'm pretty sure that's the right answer. Anyway, 
I hope you found this helpful, and um, I'll sign off now.